Hey, everybody, this is Craig Garber with Everyone Loves Guitar. I've got a really special guest today with Robert Getz. He is the owner of BAM Cases. They're headquartered out of Europe. Great product. Uh, real quickly, just an announcement. Make sure you go to everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash subscribe, and you can subscribe to the channel, the audio, and the YouTube our videos. So let me tell you about Robert. He's the owner of BAM Cases. I met him at Summer NAM. I was really impressed not only with his products, but as a person, he's got a great work ethic, which is always, you know, very important, especially when you're doing business with somebody. Uh, he's also got one of the most important attributes it takes to run a business. He's got a lot of pride of ownership in what he does. And it's been my experience that when someone takes pride in, in, in what they're doing, the quality of what they're doing is a lot better. And that's certainly the, the case with BAM cases. They've got a proprietary case design which makes their guitar cases virtually unbreakable and indestructible for the most part. I'm sure if you roll it over with a tractor, you'd probably break it, but in normal wear and tear, it's not going to break. Um, and a couple of things blew me away about the cases. First of all, the aesthetics of the case, they're really pretty cases. Um, they, they don't look, they're not the typical big black, you know, cases we all have. Um, and they're also, extremely light it, it's really deceptive it's kind of like a situation almost the words and music don't match when you pick it up you're expecting something heavier and, and the heft is just not there it's a, it's very airy and light and um in fact when i did research to prepare for this interview you look around online and the most common comment about bam cases is the words light as a feather and i would say that's very accurate uh bam's been around for 40 years Robert's owned the company for 10 years. Uh, not only is Robert a guitar player himself, which is obviously pretty important when you're making these cases, but he's got a really interesting background, and uh, we'll talk about that today. But if you play guitar, these are like really top-notch cases, and I wanted to make sure you guys knew about them. And if you travel with an expensive guitar, or if you're not taking your, car, your guitar on the road because it's expensive and you're afraid it's going to break, BAM cases is a pretty good solution for you, and you should consider it. And in fact, they are the only company out there. They guarantee the cases for life, the workmanship. If there's any problems, defects, Robert told me several stories of uh, him repairing cases himself, even 25, 35 years old, which I think is pretty cool. So, Robert, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you coming on the show. Hi, Greg. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. Where do, where, I know you, you live in uh, Munich, I think you said right now? Right, right. And you, you're all over and you speak a bunch of languages. Where'd you grow up, though, as a kid? Well, I grew up uh, in the area of uh, Erlangen, what is uh, Bavaria. It's, uh, yeah, in, in Germany, basically, <laughs> in Bavaria. Yep. And um, yeah, the, the, the area around Erlangen is the music industry area. After World War II, all the, all the, all the instrument makers settled in this area. And um, so there's all the industry found, found itself after World War II there. And uh, my family is in the music industry business for about 150 years this year. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, Holy I'm crap. Ready. My grand grand grandfather started that business, and uh, my my parents they flew over the over the border at night from the uh, uh, Soviet part of of Germany, from East Germany over the border with one saxophone. That was all they could take. Wow! And, <laughs> and they restarted the business over in the West, in in Erlangen, and yeah. So I grew up pretty much with 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 uh, music instrument industry. And I started playing the violin when I was six. Uh, I had my first little concert when I was 10. And with 12, I started my first band. So music was always part of my life. And, uh, but I had a very, very happy childhood there and grew up in, in a very nice environment. That's really cool. I didn't realize that when your family's been in the business that long. Holy crap. Um, okay, so how, how did the company itself start? And, and when did you first get involved with it? Uh, the company started around 40 years ago, pretty much, I think, last year, 40 years ago. And they, it, it, it was a, cup, a couple who started the company, and uh, they started literally in a garage. And the, the, the main idea of, the, of, of um, Philippe de Trogoff, is his name, um, was at that time he wanted to build a boat. And uh, he wanted to build it on his own, and he used material, used this this ABS and Erex, 
to build a boat for, its, for himself, a sailboat. But on the other hand, he was a musician. And um, so when he was working with this material, he thought, I might make a case for my guitar out of that. With, this a with the ABS material he was working on for the boat. OK. And so he did one. And on the side, he was also working for a, for a French um, uh, a music instrument distributor. Uh, where he earned his money. He was not only building a boat in his garage. So he was in the music industry already a little bit familiar. And so he showed around his case. And then he and his wife decided, well, let's start making instrument cases. And um, they launched those cases on, in, in Frankfurt show, Frankfurt music show. And my dad was the first distributor they got on board. He, he was one of the first customers. And this is how I got to know the, 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 the brand and the cases, because I, at this time I was a student and I worked on trade shows for my dad. So I was literally selling those cases for the company of my dad. And so I, I was there from the right from the beginning, so to say. That's really cool. And um, yeah, and this is when I got involved with the company. That's why years later, when they decided to, to sell their company, that's why I knew what I was talking of. And when I heard they were up to sell their company, that's why I came back to them. What a good story. Um, what made your dad get involved with that? Just, well, that's an interesting, it's a well, interesting business. He was, he was uh, convinced of the quality of the cases. I mean, they, they really started making light cases. And, and, and uh, before that, the, the, they were really a little bit the pioneers in this in this case industry and um, they developed this technology what was afterwards uh, copied uh, a lot by by different by different other companies and um, yeah and my dad was convinced when when he saw it the first time and he liked the design and uh, he liked also the people they were they're very nice people and um, so they got into business and so like this he was uh, he he did he still today now he's my distributor in germany and by the time now my brother took over the company my dad <laughs> is now 80 83 years old so he that's he's cool man to go out of business <laughs> that's but really my cool is still my distributor that's great man that's awesome now when you took the company over you had a you were like a pretty uh you were a very successful guy in corporate finance I want to talk to you about the Bose S1, which is an amazing speaker for acoustic guitar gigs that I recently got to test drive. The S1 has two separate channels. It's got one for guitar and one for microphone. And there's a third channel you can use for a looper or for backing tracks that you can access by Bluetooth or through a 1 8 inch input. And the S1 is actually portable and rechargeable for up to 11 hours. So the guitar and mic channels, they have separate independent tone, volume, and reverb controls. And they also have some something called a proprietary tone match switch, which EQs, optimizes, and restores the natural sound of your acoustic guitar, which as you know, is typically your biggest problem when you're playing acoustic amps. I tested the S1 speaker and it's very responsive to pickups and the tone, volume, and reverb controls genuinely work great. You can position the S1 four different ways. You can tilt it back to broadcast out to an audience, or you can put it horizontally, vertically, or on a stand. The S1 also has a proprietary Bose accelerometer, which automatically adjusts the EQ and optimizes the sound based on whichever one of these four positions you're using. So effectively, you have an acoustic guitar amp, a PA, and a killer Bluetooth speaker all in one. So the bottom line is, if you're an acoustic player, there's absolutely nothing out there that sounds this good and this big that's portable and battery powered and the s1 also happens to be the best bluetooth speaker bose makes which says a lot i used it myself for a party we had here one night and it was absolutely amazing all my kids were freaking out it's like having a full stereo system out on your patio you can easily use this for djing tailgating or whatever you want before this you'd have to
to spend thousands of dollars on a bunch of equipment to get the same thing the S1 does. On top of that, it's sleek and it looks great, just like all Bose devices do. And besides whatever money back guarantee you get from wherever you buy the S1, Bose also warranties the S1 for two years from any kind of defects in materials or performance. For more information and to find out where to get your own S1, I'd like you to go to pro.bose.com forward slash podcast. Check it out at pro.bose.com forward slash podcast and get the S1. It's outstanding. Hey guys, this is Craig. First of all, I'm really thrilled to tell you about this next advertiser because the owner and I have been friends for close to 10 years. And when I say friends, I don't mean Facebook friends. We're actually good friends. We've been to each other's homes. Our families have eaten meals together and I've carried his kids in my arms when they were babies. And even more important to you, he's got a killer product on the cutting edge of technology. So if you drive a car, truck, or motorcycle, or if you play guitar or any other stringed instrument, then pay really close attention to what I'm about to tell you. Because I want to talk to you about the last coat. The last coat is a proprietary formula that lets you wash, polish, and put a protective coating on your car. It's based on hydrophobic liquid glass nanotechnology, which is an advanced and environmentally safe technology that actually protects any surface, including guitars. The product's manufactured right here in the United States. All you do is apply it once, and it creates an ultra-thin layer which protects your car's surface for six months under any kind of driving conditions. Your car looks like you've spent basically all day washing and waxing it, not the 20 minutes it actually takes you. Then anytime your car gets dirty over the next six months, just wash it off and you'll see the water beating up on there and then wipe it down. And that same protective shiny coating that you have after applying it will still be there. It provides protection from rain, sleet, or snow, and there's no more dirty water residue. And on top of everything else, the last coat is 100% guaranteed to work. Meaning if you're unsatisfied, with the last coat for any reason at all, or if it fails to live up to any of its claims, just send the product back. They'll give you a full refund, no headaches, no hassles, anytime for 365 days after you order it. And here's the really cool stuff. The last coat also works just as well on guitars, basses, countertops, mirrors, anything wood or pretty much any surface at all. I've used it on all my guitars, including my 335, and they're literally mint. To get this product, which includes free travel size box Models for your guitar that fit right inside your guitar case, along with free microfiber towels. And on top of that, if you use the coupon code ELG15, you're also going to get another 15% off. To get all this, go to everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash TLC. And don't forget to use the coupon code ELG15, and you'll also get 15% off. That's everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash TLC. If you're thinking about advertising here on Everyone Loves Guitar, pay close attention. With over 83,000 listens a month, we've had tremendous growth this year. As a result, we're going to be increasing our advertising rates after the first of the new year. So if you're a business looking to generate new leads or increase your cash flow by adding new clients or customers, or if you're looking for general brand exposure, or if you're a label looking to promote new music and you want to lock into the current advertising rates before they go up, listen closely. Even if you want to advertise next year, Contact us now and you'll get to lock into the current rates before rates go up at the end of this year. And you can do that by going to everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash advertise. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. If you want to buy or sell a home or investment property and you're here in the Tampa Bay area in Hillsborough, Pinellas, or Pasco counties, then listen up. West Florida Real Estate is a local residential real estate broker that's helped over 250 Bay Area homeowners buy and sell their properties in the last four years alone. If you're looking to sell, you'll want to get their free report, The 7 Biggest Mistakes Homeowners Make When Hiring a Realtor. And if you're looking to buy a property, you definitely want to get your hands on The 21 Most Expensive Mistakes Tampa Home Buyers Make When Buying a Home. Each one of these reports is going to save you time and money. Inside, you'll discover the 7 Most Important Things to Consider When Hiring a Realtor, what to do if you're buying and selling a home at the same time, and the danger of choosing a realtor who agrees with everything you say. To get your hands on these free reports, head on over to westfloridarealestate.com. That's westfloridarealestate.com. If you enjoy this show and you'd like to support it, go to everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash support. Yeah, when I when I took the, the company over, I was working as a CFO of a German conglomerate in in plastic industry and um 
specialized in in, in medical medical devices, and um, yeah, it it I was I had my own career, I had my own uh, 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 vita after all, and and um, but for me the interesting part was being being a, being a CFO in a in a in a huge huge company is one thing, but you know it's always different if if it's your own company and if you have some some roots to it and if you have if you have the you know it's music industry is always very appealing also and so it for me it, people were always asking me wasn't that a big step you know coming from this high end industry uh, management thing to to your small uh, little uh, entity now I have to say no. The challenges are are the same, and and just the numbers are smaller. That's the only thing that really changes. But I mean, we struggle with the same issues. We have the same. Uh, we we have to be successful. We have to be innovative, and it's nothing really that's different. So I rather like to have my own company and to be back in the music industry. That's great. Uh one thing about you, you're like really, I, I didn't know about this business at all. So when I started studying it to prep for the interview, I was amazed how many moving parts there are to this thing. This is not, and, and, it, and with you guys, you've got cellos, violins, violas, woodwinds, uh, saxophone, clarinet, flute. So you have each of these moving parts for each of these separate products. And on top of that, you got you're you're pretty cutting edge with design how how did you like what were some of the big challenges when you when you first took this over because i i i wouldn't i wouldn't go into that business because it's just not this so unfamiliar with all these different things there's a lot going on yeah this is um people when they see our cases a lot of times they think of of uh, of uh, samsonite or uh, tumi or remove our cases but the big difference is our uh, batches are very very small for example when we when we do our monthly planning for the production there might be like three bassoon cases in it there might be like 20 uh, uh, a ba bass clarinet cases in it, but there's also like 200 guitar cases or or uh, 300 violin cases. But the batches you cannot really compare to any other luggage industry because every case is different, every case has different parts, every case has a different shape. So the whole process is that's that's why automation is no issue with us. We cannot automate anything. Yeah. Because you know, and then there's the three bassoon cases coming along. So how do you? <laughs> <want to> <laughs> that? So yeah. there's no no way you can automate. It's all. That's where we are emphasizing a lot on is that, that our cases are definitely all handmade, and from from scratch to to finish, they're all handmade. And what is appealing is that, on the other hand, when you when you when you were talking of design, we we really took in those 10 years the product to the next step and this was our also our uh, plan because the design wise to really follow up and and to 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 get it into the in into our times in in, in terms of design and we knew we had a very good base product and we knew we have a lot of um, of possibilities in developing for other instruments than the existing at that time, because they were only covering about half the range we cover today. And there's still more to come. I mean, we just developed a new uh, new case for a for a double bass. So there is always uh, we we were really focusing and specializing on cases and. Everything what, what when we took the over the company, there was a part what was dealing with with strings. There was a part what was dealing with other accessories. We cut that all off. We focus on the cases. We focus on on making luggage for musical instruments. So yeah, the what is our biggest biggest challenge is to keep up with production. Biggest challenge is also to secure quality. 
and um, yeah, and to to maintain our position in the market. Did you speak all these languages before you got involved with BAM? I can't believe how many languages you speak. Yeah, I I did, but more by accident because. <laughs> Because I, I, for example, when I was a young, when I was a student, I took a job working for Club Med, for example, uh, as a sailing teacher on in in the, on the vacation. So, <laughs> you know, once you work for a French company, you better start speaking the language. <laughs> and um, the same I did in Italy. And uh, yeah, these these Roman languages. Once right. you, you 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 know one, the Spanish is not far away then, but. Trying to learn Chinese, I have to admit that was my I, I gave up on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Also, I tried it, but no way. No Yeah, way. It's, it's tough so Chinese. Um, and I must tell everybody your cases are made in France. They're not made in China or or assembled in China. They're handmade in, individually in France, which I thought was really cool. Okay. Um let's talk about some of the 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 more important things that guitar players should be considering when buying a case and not to put you on the spot, but how does BAM do maybe a better job of providing these things over other case manufacturers? So let's start with like shape and size and fit. Well, our approach is always, and, and this is what makes it also for us expensive, to be honest. We want to, we, we want to make the, the, you mentioned that the case is light and as, um, as robust, yes, and and as but as close to the instrument as possible because this is what what musicians always ask us. We want we want as the case being as small as possible, but as light as possible and as strong as possible. So talking of guitar cases, when we start with the with the electric guitar series we make uh, today, we are we are we are, we took the the main shapes meaning the Strat, the te Telecaster, the Les Paul, and um, uh, the 335, and the SG. So those, those uh, uh, shapes, we, we, we made a case for each shape. So the, the, you, for the Stratocaster, you can't get a case what is smaller than that, what we do, because there's, there's only the, um, the security um, of, of um, foam, in between the outer shell and the guitar, you could, you know, the, the case is not much bigger than the guitar itself. The, it, like this, it is as small as possible and as light as possible. And you can take it usually, usually I have to say not 100%, uh, into the cabin in, in airplanes. Because yeah. you take the traditional cases for, for electric guitars, it's always this big square yeah. case. And people would not let you on board. They, you have to, you have to check it in. And this was, this was for the electric guitar. We wanted to create a case what at least passes 80 to 90 percent of the airlines would let you in. Um, and now we we further developed this case with a with a with a soft top on. We have we've we have made one with a leather top, but even gives us gives the outside a, a softer touch if you, if you bump somewhere. But the main issue, I, I repeat myself, is, is the strength of the case and the design and being as close as possible to the, to the instrument. And you've got also the arch top cases and uh, acoustic. You've got Martin, Taylor, Dreadnought as well. Yeah, we, this is the other range of guitar cases we make. Um, these are the so-called high-tech cases. They are uh, more like a traditional um, uh, guitar case, and but we we use a technique what makes the case extremely light. As I said, it's a composite um, from an outside ABS um, shell with with then with a with a uh, with a polyurethane uh, uh, inner inner part. What is what is like a soft. First, it is soft, then it gets very strong and hard uh, um, uh, foam. Well, we inject, and then we close it with PUTG. This is another a plastic layer over this before we put the textile inside the case. So this case is, it, the construction is more or less like a surfboard. And okay. 
as I say, it comes from, from, boat, from race boat making. And race boats have the same specifics. They need to be light and they need to be strong. And so this is our technology, what we use. And like this, we, we created shapes every, for every case, for every shape what is out there in the market, we try to create their own case. So we don't have a standard case where uh, one, one big uh, steel string um, uh, guitar case. No, we have, we have cases for every size, for double O, triple O, grand concert, for the, uh, for the dreadnought, as you said, for, even for the Manouche guitar, um, Archtop 16, Archtop 17, and uh, yeah. So the, the shapes we, we don't have today, we work on trying every year to create one new one, a new one to the range, to add one to the range. We almost cover all what is missing, telling you honestly right now is a jumbo and a 12 string. That's, uh, this is not in the range by today, uh, but that's a project for next year. And um, yeah, like this, we, we try to get really get the perfect fit for the, for the instrument. Cool. Talk, talk about, uh, pro, you know, protection from the outside elements of climate and humidity. Well, it is uh, humidity, to start with humidity, our, our guitars have a seal. The seal, what is, what, I mean, uh, let me make it a little bit more plastic. So you, you can throw our case into a swimming pool and it won't drown. It is really, uh, uh, it is really, the, the seal is extremely tight. Sure enough, you don't have to, you cannot use it as a, as a floater and, and sit. <laughs> After a while, it would <laughs> let water in, but humidity has no real chance to, to go into the case. That is the same with, with, with insulation. Through this technique, uh, meaning the, 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 the composite construction of our cases, we have an insulating moment in there. What gives what 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 keeps keeps the temperature not forever but keeps it out for quite a while and um, to to control humidity and temperature in the case therefore we created a tracker but i think uh i don't know if you want to speak about this right now uh, yeah we can talk about that now let's talk about the tracker because it's re it's relevant well this was one of the one of my of my uh, big, big uh, dreams to have a case for communicates with you as a musician, because the biggest damage we get is not, is not mechanical damage on instruments. It is a lot of time, it is temperature, because people forget their case in the trunk when it's whatever, when it's 100 degrees outside, and, and the sun is beating on the trunk, and well, you know, the whole, the, the instrument just, yeah, explodes or whatever, breaks. And same with dryness. We have this case more in, for example, in Russia in wintertime when it gets, when it's outside for minus 40 degrees. It's not so much the cold what is harming the instrument. It is the dryness inside because people are heating up the, the, the apartments and houses like hell because they need to outside it's minus 40 degrees so the air is extremely dry you get a lot of cracks in in guitars and and cellos and violins because the air is too dry so you have to humify your 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 instrument so the 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 basic idea i had for a long time was to create a tracking device what monitors those two things temperature and humidity and who alarms you if you get over a certain temperature or if you get underneath a certain humidity. And uh, we were lucky to get a cooperation with a big um, telecommunication company to develop this um, tracking device. And now we're able to monitor that through an app, what we developed as well. Um, or you can download and for for Apple and Android uh, phones, and then you have a you have a you have a one hundred percent monitoring of your instrument. Okay, so like uh, so something would pop like some sort of an alert will pop up letting you know. Yes, we set okay. 
we've we've set the um, the alarm uh, for the for the temperature at uh, 40 degrees Celsius. The equivalent in Fahrenheit, you have to help me. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, but go ahead. We have on the other side, we have humidity underneath 15% humidity. It, gives you, it, it goes off your, as an alarm. Yeah, it's 104 degrees. That's really high. And I'm sure you can adjust that down or up if you want. Adjust that down. Yeah. Just in a testing phase right now. And um, yeah, we're, we're now going out with a tracker and this is adjustable. So yeah. Now, the other cool thing about your tracker is there are other trackers in the industry but exp the, the what you have is ex like totally cool. Explain that it's a big differential. Well, our tracker is um, it also I have to say it also gives you the GPS location, and you also have a little map on on the app where you can see where your instrument is. This is also important for some instruments. But so if you leave it on the train or something, because a lot of people do. You can follow it. You can right. find it in most of the time people find it, the instrument, and they don't even want to steal it, but they don't know to whom it belongs. And then right. they take it home and they and it sits there, but with a tracker you can follow it up and you can see where it is. So the 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 big difference between our tracing, tracking, and monitoring device and others is that we are connected to the mobile phone network. And other trackers and other monitoring devices. They give you the temperature and they might give you the, the humidity, but they are connected by a, by a Bluetooth. And by, if you have a connection by a Bluetooth, you, you literally sit next to your case to see what temperature and humidity it is. <laughs> but that's something I don't need to know because I'm <laughs> my case. I need to know when I forget my case outside in the, in the heat, in the trunk, and I'm, I'm inside having a lunch with friends, and then my alarm has to go off. And it's not enough to have a Bluetooth because it won't reach further than whatever, uh, 20 feet or I don't know, then, then it's over, then the signal is away. Right. But with our tracker, you can, you can monitor uh, your, your case wherever it is in the world. If it is, uh, I can monitor from here, what's the temperature in my case in New York? And I can see the temperature, I can see the humidity, and I can see the location. So, so if it's in cartage or, or storage or anything like that. That is, you, you know, you, this, is something, this is something nobody else provides. And one big challenge was also, is all, always the power supply. Today, our tracker is a little bit big, if you want. It's, it's the size of a small, of a small um, mobile phone. But this is only because, because of the battery. Because the battery, we... We, we had the choice to, to, to have a battery what has two days of durance, meaning a rechargeable battery. Uh, we choose one what has 60 days because we know our musician. And the musician is not a guy who charges every day his little device. Yeah. That's why we choose a 60-day battery, what makes the device a little bit bigger. And, but nevertheless, like this, you can monitor the, on, on the app, you can see, the uh, load loading of the battery as well. So Great. once it's low, it gets red, and then you know you have to recharge it. Very cool. Did you? How did you uh, like come up? Did you come up with all these ideas, or how did this come up? Well, the beginning of all this was a um, that we had we had the idea to create an application for for um, uh, school bands and school orchestras because what, what we realized is in 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 our music world um for all these school orchestras and school bands there is no tool no 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 application to organize them what 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 every soccer club and every baseball club has today this means it's an organizer uh for for the the the, the orchestra um, we call him the, the orchestra boss or the, the band leader. Sure. To organize the kids, including the parents. These applications exist for, as I said, in the sports world, but not for mu music, music, uh, uh, um, the music world. So we kind of uh, um, adapted this 
to organize school orchestras, including the parents, and having a closed shop. So no, no, no advertisement, nothing. They are just, it's like a, like a chat group, only dedicated people. They get invited from the band leader and then they can log in. And so this is a very closed and safe environment. Once we, we created this application with, with, um, with the possibility of the kids to chat in between them and the parents and other musicians, we pre presented that at a at a yeah at a kind of a congress, and there was by chance I met um, I met the the CEO of a big of Vodafone of a big mobile phone company, and I just presented it to him. He was very interested, and then I I, I told him about my vision about the the monitoring the case, monitoring temperature and humidity in a case, and he was so fascinated by that idea that he really supported us in developing it. Because the big trick about that was to get the connection costs down. Yeah. The first, the first quotes I had on that what was two years ago when I, when I got in touch with some telecommunication companies just presenting this idea. They said, if it works worldwide, it would have been $180 per month. Per month? Yeah, yeah, because you know the 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 low rates on telecommunication. What you get the flat rates. Mm. They only work in one country. They don't work. Uh, out. That's right, of course. Yeah, when my wife goes to visit her mom in England. Yeah, right, right. Most of the time, people switch the little the 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 it, SIM card or yep. the phone or whatever. Yeah. So if you want a if you want a device, and musicians travel, and musicians who have expensive instruments, what you want to monitor they are good good musicians and they will they will travel and they will go today and in the u.s tomorrow and whatever i know so they need a device what works everywhere and um so i presented that idea and he he what he said let's let's get our get our um our technicians to that and see if we can a solution what works everywhere and what is a reasonable pricing so we got the pricing down to one dollar fifty per month. That's a pretty big, big <laughs> pretty pretty big. It's a percentage, one per less than a percent. <laughs> one dollar fifty. What was? Uh, yeah, and then I said, now it makes sense to develop the um, the device because uh, with this rate we can. It makes sense for a musician. For if he has an instrument from, I would say, three thousand dollar upwards, it makes sense. Yeah, totally. So then as we were as we were in the process of creating the application, we just added this functionality to the app. So today the app has this functionality in, but you don't you don't have to use it. If you're a kid and you're you're just organizing your orchestra with it, you just do that. But you can still chat with the musicians and you have this this posting function and all that. But for the ones who uh, who buy a device, they connect this device with their uh, with their iPhone or with their Android phone, and then they have this functionality in the app to to use. Man, that's that's really smart. Uh, can let's say people have a, a music director? Can he can the band use the app to have a group with themselves so the MD can sort of put out messages? You know, check out is here. Uh, excuse me, uh, you know, uh, load time is here, rehearsal time is here, is, like with individual groups, is that possible? Yeah, that is possible. But you don't need to, you, as I say, you, you, you schedule, the, you, you, can, you can schedule, for example, if you have uh, today all the, all the, the, the string part of, an, of a school orchestra it has a rehearsal. Tomorrow is all the wind instruments who have a rehearsal. And on Saturday, all together have a rehearsal. And on Sunday, you have this little concert going on in the next village. So who is driving whom, who is bringing whom, and all the, the infrastructure behind of the parents, they, can, they, they are involved as, as the non-active members, and the active members are the musicians. So this was basically the idea, you know, and, and everybody gets all the information, so everybody knows what is going on. But on the other hand, you have no commercial, you have nobody who's trying to sell anything to the kids. Yeah can you get into this group who whatever you don't want uh, other people to join that in our times so 
this is one part of the app to organize this whole thing. But then the, the, the professionals came to us, so we could use that as well for our orchestra as adults and normal. Yeah. So that's true enough. They can use it. They can create their group. They can, you know, so it's all very specified for mu musicians' needs. Fantastic. Right. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Have you gotten, is, has that, that app, I would imagine that's given you guys a lot more brand awareness, just the app alone. Well, we were until this until now we are we are we're testing it. We are we we gave it out to to um, some school orchest orchestras to to get out the last box in yeah. this. Um, it it was pretty work intensive to create it because we oh. create in six languages, because as we are. We want it to be used like like all over the world because sure. so we got it in Chinese, we got it in Portuguese, in English, German, French, and Russian. So we still have some oh, length. Wow. But this this makes the whole project pretty complicated. And mm -hmm. but nevertheless, we are there. It works. It's uh, uh, appreciated by by the the school orchestras here in France and in Germany already, and the. To some people, I talked to some musical educators in, in the U.S., they were really, they were just really said it's great. This is what we were waiting for a long time. And now we're going to market it. Okay, so cool. I have to say the app is for free and you can just download it in the Apple Store or in the, in the, in the what's it called? The Google. 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 Yeah, I don't have enough. Yeah. So it's, it's called Gigs, G-I-G-S is the app. So anybody wants to download it. What's that? Gigs by Bam. Gigs by Bam. By Bam. Very cool, man. Uh, let's talk about the durability and the protection outside the case. You, you started talking about the switching from poly to polycarbonate from uh, ABS. You want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah. The the state of the art. Um, um, material for 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 instrument cases and even for luggage for normal luggage i have to say is polycarbonate polycarbonate is a is a, a plastic what is what is what is very very strong but also very difficult to to yeah to work with because you need you need compared to abs what we use until today for all cases um, you need a lot more temperature. You need, instead of 80 degrees Celsius, you need 200 degrees Celsius to melt it, to get it into shape. That's the first thing. And um, on the other hand, the advantage is it's lighter. It's, you don't need the thickness, what you need with other, with ABS. And, um, but, and, and it is a lot more shock resistant. I mean, you can hit it with a golf club and it won't break. Um, I'm not saying it's indestructible. Everything is destructible. I mean, you know, take a take some truck and roll over it; it will break. Yes, sure. Uh, but it is it has an extreme. It is really extremely strong. This is the reason why uh, uh, Tumi and Samsonite and Remova they all switch to this material. But there's a big difference. A lot of people sell you polycarbonate. And they talk of a blend of ABS and polycarbonate. They put a little bit of polycarbonate in there and then they say it's polycarbonate. That's not true. It's true, there is polycarbonate in there, but it doesn't have the same resistance. So if you talk of polycarbonate, you want 100% polycarbonate. And yeah, That's what we- you guys are, use 100%. Yes, yeah. we are now, now uh, uh, gradually switching one instrument case after the other. To the polycarbonate technology what is not uh, too easy but we're getting there and uh i'm assuming it's pricier to switch car to polycarbonate because of the benefits it brings it is a little bit pricier but what is what is more expensive for us as a producer is the tooling because we need uh, really different tooling that the the material itself is not really a lot pricier there I wouldn't even mention it. No, no. Okay. 
uh, the, what is really makes it more expensive is the tooling because we have to make all the molds from from uh, aluminum. We have to CNC. We need big CNC machines to cut to 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 create those molds, and this makes it expensive. And I would imagine all your molds are custom made. It's not like people are selling, you know, 1989 Telecaster molds on the open market, right? <laughs> they're all handmade. They're all made by our team. Um, all that's cool. Very uh, specially and 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 custom made for us. Yeah, yeah. And also, you had mentioned that some companies use carbon fiber, but you guys elected not to do that. Yeah, we decided like uh, by the time we took over the company, we were discussing of taking in a carbon fiber production line, and we looked into the process. And also, the 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 people who started the company before they were all already looking into it, but they decided against it. But nevertheless, we did another um, audit to see because carbon fiber has has one advantage it's really very light as well and strong but it's such a dirty process you don't want anybody to do it it's it's really it's it's very bad for the people who have to work it mm. and afterwards even the even the, um how do you call it the, the, the dust what comes when you when you drill holes in it oh it's yeah very bad for people so okay. we just against it we said this is a dirty process we will not do that and we don't want anybody to do that for us that's cool that's really good not to blow smoke but you know that not a lot of companies you know a lot of companies are thinking numbers period it's good that you know you, you didn't you wouldn't want to operate in that environment so you you don't want other people operating in that environment that's really good man yeah. um talk about durability and protection inside the case now Inside the case, we, um, we, our, our technology is a full suspension of the instrument. Um, we, we, well, basically, we have two technologies. We have one that is in, in, like, a, like a full suspension, meaning the, meaning the instrument lays on, on cushions in the, in, in the back, in the front, and the middle is like free, like like it's, it's sitting in nothing. It's, it's just in the air. So if you get a shock from the outside, it doesn't really reach the instrument itself. This is our high-tech cases, meaning the acoustic instrument cases. So, and we have a, we have a cushion from the top, and uh, meaning one in, in the back and one on the on the head of the guitar. So. It's very nice fixed in the case, but it's as I said, it's full suspended. Um, the the other technology we use is inside the case for the electric guitar. We have a we have a, a hundred percent shaped bed for the exact Telecaster, for example. So it, it's in a in a it, it's there's not not one one even one half centimeter of room. It is exactly fitted in, and it has also coming from the top in in the in the top of the case. It's the same, so the the instrument is really hundred percent securely st stored in this case. What about you know from a player standpoint? The big concern with traveling, if you have like a vintage Gibson, those necks are are the headstocks and the necks. What do you guys do to support that and make sure that doesn't break? For the headstock, we have we have another cushion coming from the top down. What really secures the headstock exactly, you know, what what holds it down. So there's no um, how do you call it? It can't really uh, um, swing. Or, uh, there's no wiggle room, basically. There's no wiggle room. It's it's absolutely fixed in the case. Fantastic. Um, and you're pretty, you personally, I know, or I don't know when, I don't know when you sleep, but, uh, you're like involved in quality control as well over all these things. Right. I'm yeah. serious. I mean, I work a lot, but you, you kick my ass in that. Man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I have my time off too, but, um, no, we, we, we spend really 
a, a lot of time in, in, in quality control because one thing we don't want, we don't want, want cases to travel around the world and then find out once they are somewhere in the world that something isn't right. So what we, what we have here, we have a team of quality control right here in the factory where before every, anything leaves, we have a quality control in every case. And then, for example, in the US, every case gets unpacked and checked again. So we, in, our, in our warehouse in, in um, Hackensack in New Jersey, we unpack every case, we check it, and then we repackage it. So we have like this double control we do everywhere in the world. Um, we do the same thing in China. We do the same thing in Brazil or in, in, in Russia in our distribution companies. So we have a very strong uh, um, quality control. Just thought of something. You, I was thinking when you said your dad was a distributor and he's one of your distributors. Are, are these corporate owned distributions or and managed or are they independent? No, we have our own corporate distributions, our own daughter companies, distribution companies. Right, okay. In certain countries, in uh, as I just said, in Brazil, in Russia, in the U.S., in China. Okay. So there we are, our own distributor. Which is great because you can maintain all the 100% standards of everything. Yes. Yeah. And in countries like South Korea, like Australia, Japan, and whatever, name it, whatever, Italy, we have... Distribu distributors, dis uh, external distributors. Yeah, third, par third party business, yeah. But this is all very, very long relationship uh, 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 partnerships and they are with the company all forever. Cool, thank you. Uh, talk about one thing I was really impressed, you guys, I couldn't believe all the details that you have worked out. So talk about some of those because they're pretty compelling. Well, Let's say we try to integrate every, well, as, as much as we can, we try to integrate and create our own, own gear for the cases, meaning our own accessories for the cases, for example. Uh, while talking about, about, for example, the locks, we were, we were using uh, Chinese locks for what are, what are used in the industry a lot for musical instruments. And we were not very satisfied, never were, with the, with the quality of those locks. But there was nothing really out there what was better or, yeah, what else we could use. So we, we went into a project that is now five, four years ago into creating our own lock. And we did this also with a, with a company who does all the accessories for, for Remova cases. And so through a process uh, of, of, of about a year time, we created our own lock, what is a polycarbonate lock. And what we created that way, that it's not sticking out too far, so it doesn't damage the, the instrument. It has a soft feel to it, it has soft corners as well. It's not, um, it doesn't have any sharp corners, so you can scratch the instrument. And yeah, this took us, uh, took us a lot of investment dollars and uh but it pays out now we uh, we have our our own dedicated bam lock and like this we have a lot of details where we where we work on every year to improve improve the 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 cases and uh you told me that the uh the locks are not made in china any longer they're made in czechoslovakia we we now make the, the 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 locks in Czechoslovakia. The old locks were Chinese made, and what I said, they are very common in the in the music industry. But um, our locks are made in Czechoslovakia now. And you have one like a little detail I thought was cool, like about with the, a lot of women musician breaking their fingernails with the locks. <laughs> yes, this is a little. It's 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 a very little invention, but it makes a big difference. Yeah, huge. Uh, so we have we have we've created a little puller on on the cases to open the the case because usually you need your fingernails to 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 pull it open and especially when you have a, a lot of um women artists on for example violins cellos and 
and the the big issue is the fingernails so we created a we created this little puller what is now mounted on every case to open the top easily and not to break any fingernails anymore yeah but that's cool you know the little things are the the things that you know it's little things in a, a song or in production that separate you know, a number one hit from something that never gets heard. So, I mean, those are the details that are important and everything. Um, also, sometimes I've read some cases uh, when you open the case up because the top is heavy, case falls back over, which is an instrument pops out. You guys have a way of countering that. Yeah, we, the, if, if we have an instrument where this could be the case, for example, if you have a violin case with four bows in, uh, where you can put four bows in the top, and this, this creates a certain weight, when you, when you have a very light violin on the other side, that might happen, but we, we just have no, then we, we create the case like that it opens completely. You can't just open it halfway. It opens okay. fully open. Like this, you're not in danger that anything would, would pop out or would, would make the case fall over and throw out the instrument. Great. Uh, a concern we have with, with uh, um, trombones, for example, we have the same concern. And there we took the, took the possibility to make the case like really flat open and then you take out your instrument. So this is a day-to-day -day feedback thing with our musicians and um, ambassadors where we try to try to improve the best we can. Very cool. And uh, we talked about your tracking devices. What else here? Straps. Yeah. I, yeah, the, that was pretty cool. The straps, we... First, the first thing with straps is that we, we want to make sure that the straps really are very well hooked up to the case and are not breaking where the, the hook is because hooks can be, can be a problem too when they break and then the case with the instrument falls down. So what we are using, we're using uh, car car carabina. Hook. Yeah, car you said you studied mountain climbers. We studied mountain climbing gear. Yeah. And and uh, went into into professional mountain climbing shops to also to also get ideas for the for the for the straps because you know instruments are not really really super heavy but you still want a comfortable carrying uh, experience um, when you use uh, shoulder straps and rucksack straps and whatever so there we we. We studied them and we created for our for our instrument cases uh, straps what are really adjusted to your body and what are what are hooked up uh, precisely and, and strongly with with carabina hook so they don't break. That's great. That's what I'm saying. Though. Like these little details are, you know, and I'll just say that I thought you know it's a boutique product the way it looks. I was, you're not anywhere near the top price for the value you're given. You're like right in the middle price, which I couldn't believe. I thought for sure you'd be the, the high end. And I, when I did all the research, I was really surprised. It's an extremely fairly priced case for the value it delivers. Man. Yeah, that was all, that's for us also the, 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 the challenge. And this is perhaps an advantage uh, as we're, we're, we're now in, in, a, in a certain size of company and si certain size of, of production, we can still kind of, kind of uh, um, optimize a little bit our, our production. And, um, but I'm coming back to the technologies, you know, if you look at the, at the really, really expensive cases, for example, for guitar, if you look at an accord case, okay, that case is a, is, a, is a carbon fiber case and it has this extremely dirty process behind it and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process what takes endless long and that's why it has that price. This you have to take into consideration. That's why we, we stepped away from it for, for health reasons and for productivity reasons as well. Yeah, it's a very fairly priced case. Um, Rob, I'm going to talk about this afterwards. Robert has been generous, put together a really nice offer for listeners of everyone 
for listeners of everyone loves guitar. Um, so stick around and I'll, I'll let you know about it, but it's, it's really cool. Um, let's, I want to get back to you. Let's talk about you a little more. Um, and let me just tell people BAM has locations or distributors, as Robert said, in Europe, Thailand, Thailand, right? Thailand, we have a factory and a distribution company, yeah. But China, Russia, Brazil. How, how, how often do you see all the factories? You're like always out pretty much, right? Yeah, I'm out of, out of if, if, if we say if a month says four weeks, I'm, I'm pretty much out three weeks. I'm traveling, yeah. yeah. Wow, okay, cool. All right, Qu questions for you. Tell me, uh, what's the best decision you ever made? Wow, the best decision was uh, my, <laughs> my wife. I knew you were going to say, she said, she's probably right down the hall or right next yeah, to you. Yeah, uh, right down the hall, so I have to say that, no. <laughs> she's, my, she's, she's definitely my best decision. And the second best was to, to, to switch over from the big industry to our BAM company. Yeah. I give you a lot of credit for that. I know you said it wasn't a hard decision. But the average person is not the perception, which you know is not reality. The perception is if you have a job as an employee, that nothing can ever happen. That why give that up for a business? That's not true because things happen every day to companies. Um, but it it was a big leap of faith to do that. Yes, 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 it was, and. And um, it was more the, that that uh, my wife and I took this decision also, because uh, we we were really looking also forward because we saw the potential and we saw what we can do with this company, and uh, yeah, and this this really pushed us to to do it. But I agree with you; it was not an easy step. Yeah. Uh, I could have, could have uh, for sure stayed there until my whatever retirement, you know? Sure. And it wouldn't have worked had you not have the work ethic that you have. Yeah, most probably. I mean, you need, as an entrepreneur, I mean, you need to, you, you need to have to, to go for it. I mean, there's no, there's no, <laughs> there's a, that's a stupid saying. There's no free lunch, but it's uh, it, sure enough, you you need you need a certain um, ambition and you need a certain uh, uh, endurance and you know to to do this. I agree. Yeah, and I think that pride of ownership comes in there is what I talked about in the beginning because it's one thing to focus on one aspect, sales or marketing or production. You've got to have your hands in everything. I mean, machining, tooling and dyeing, acquisition of parts, raw materials, cutting edge of fashion, you know, and I know you have a team, but you've got to spearhead all that. That's a lot of moving parts. It really, really is. And if, unless you're like, uh, unless you have that drive, the work ethic and the pride of ownership, I think it's impossible to do that. Man. I give you a lot of credit. It's, it's, you got your hands on. I agree. If you're not, if you're not ready to, to, to dive into all these, these parts, what you were just mentioning. Okay. I have to say the, the design part and the marketing part, I give that's part of, that's my wife's work. Sure. Uh, I try to keep all the, all the rest together. And um, this is, yeah, as you said, it's a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. There's no, no question about it. Well, you got, you're doing a great job, man. Uh, I always like asking this question to people from other countries because it's a different answer than Americans. What is your definition of happiness? Happiness is, oh, wow. What is my definition of happiness? Um, well, being, knowing that, that, that something worked out, knowing, being, being, um, yeah tough question right tough question when i'm when i'm am i the happiest is uh is um when i'm well <laughs> you're looking at your wife so she was looking at me 
Good. Well, I'm very happy when my wife is uh, is happy. A happy wife, happy life. Happy life. <laughs> That's yeah. the same saying here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think what what makes me happy is is occasions when when you know when the family comes together and when I when I'm with my three sons who are a little bit spread all over because they go to boarding schools and they're never if we're not spending too much time as a family. Sure. You know, and uh, those days like like christmas and uh, where everybody comes together this is for me a definition of happiness to be that's cool man good to hear that another tough question what do you like most about yourself myself yeah that's embarrassing oh my I, god i know don't be embarrassed don't, don't look at it embarrassing like that no people people <laughs> this is the difference a lot of times with musicians are and anybody any creatives are very reluctant to say something good about themselves well i think i'm i'm really a optimist and this is something i like it myself because there's a lot of people I know and a lot of people around me who are the opposite. But I, I like being an, op, uh, an optimist. And for me, it always worked, worked out fine being an optimist, you know. That's, you have to be an optimist to be an entrepreneur, man. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you can't be a pessimist because you'll be done because there's so many things that are unknown. And you got to just sort of like, OK, I'm, I think we'll do this. You know, you, you have to. You're not going to succeed. That's a great quality, man. How about the other side? If there's one thing you could change about yourself, what would that be? Well, that might be, might be, and, and it sounds, sounds weird, but it might be being sometimes too optimistic. I because that. you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm too euphoric and, um, and uh, I, I should be, sometimes I should be a little bit more Practical. Practical. Yeah, I get that. It's hard though. It's hard. You can't have both. You can't have both. No, 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 no. That's what I yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to say you're an op. You can't be optimistic and then say, well, but maybe it won't work. It's that's a tough one, man. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a little bit too euphoric, you know. And for example, when I told you about the app and and developing it, I'm I'm so excited about that project, uh, but it's not so easy to to transport it. And to bring yeah. it, and this is what I, I'm, uh, yeah, there I was too euphoric in the beginning. Now it take, I just have to accept it takes time. That's why I said I was too optimistic. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, the other thing you did, I was surprised you rolled it out all in all the languages at the same time. That's a huge challenge. Yeah, we, we really want to make it a, a, a community for musicians, like create a, 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 yeah, an environment for, 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 for all, all musicians where they all can communicate with each other. And when I just look at this little music school we have in, in, in our little village, and I present it to, it to them, and they, they, they just had, a, had a, a meeting with all other music schools from all over the world, from Brazil, from from the U.S., from uh, uh, other European countries, and they all met in 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 Lettland. You know where the Lettland? Lap Lapland? Yeah, Lettland. I don't know. Uh, in English, it's it's uh, East uh, Island, Lettland. Lettland. This is where the reindeers come from. Lapland, I think they call it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know where that is. Huge meeting with all these 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 school orchestras there, and everybody is talking a different language, but that's what music is about you know yeah this is why we created it in all these languages and we will we keep at it the next plan is, is spanish for sure and japanese that's great man and it's and the app again is gigs by bam Gigs by bam. Yeah. very cool uh tell me your best childhood memory best childhood memory oh I have a lot of good childhood memories. I'm just thinking about it. Most probably was my uh, the 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 uh, well with my with, that's really childhood. I mean, we were young kids. We were like 14 years old, and we had an open air concert, and we were like the headliner. And this was this was something really special. <laughs> that is cool, man. 
I have child. I mean, 14 years old, you're already kind of a teenager. So no, that's childhood. That's childhood still. Uh, tell me something or someone you miss from your childhood. Mm. That's a good question. You know, through the course of life, I mean, there's a there's a couple of people you lose out of sight. They're not gone, but they're and that's those people. There would be like like uh, like two or three people I kind of lost contact, not by any bad means or mm. by any any things, but um, that's those those three people from my from my my uh, friends uh, with. Even so, two of them I was making music with. Uh, we did, we lost each other somehow in the course. Yeah, of that's the uh, number one. That's the number one answer I get to that question: is childhood friends that you just lost contact with. They had good memories. It's funny. Uh, most important thing your dad taught you. Yeah, it, I guess it's be patient, be patient, and um, and uh, and always always look at the bright things of life, and not not don't don't be don't be negative. I think that's where where it comes from. He was the optimist. He he got yeah. that from him. That's cool. How about your mom? What's the most important thing she taught you? Uh, to she, the most important thing she taught me was uh, uh, that it is always good if you're able to use your hands to get get things done. You know, she's a very practical person, and so all the the the, the technical stuff, more or less, I got from her. So I want to, It reminds me of a story that you told me. Uh, getting your, I I think this is a really good reflection of your character. Talk about what you were doing in China at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> that that was that was actually my um, my colleague associate uh, who, who brought me into this because she she told me that we were going to this concert hall to talk to the to the concert master and because it's a, it's a big a big um, orchestra who. Who is uh, who? Who ordered all the cases for all the orchestra from from BAM? So they had the cases already for two years, and we had this, this catch up meeting in in, in Sing Sing Tao, I think it was, and so it was nine o'clock in the evening, and I said I thought we meet him, and then we go for drinks, and so I came into the into the practice room and there were all these cases and, and the musicians and and uh, my colleague she started unpacking the tools and I said tools for to to, to do reparation on cases and I said so <laughs> and she said well we are here to repair some cases so what I did at nine o'clock in the evening I found myself repairing <laughs> changing locks changing handles and just getting getting the the little defects we had on those cases done because well as we're not always in china so they they just took advantage of it and until 10 30 i was repairing the case but afterwards at least i got my little gin tonic so there you go i found myself at nine o'clock in the evening in the middle of china yeah but that's a great story man because not too many owners of businesses are willing to do that you know that's even like when you just said use your hands to get things done you know that's a really good uh you know, quality as to your commitment to, to, to what you're putting out there, man. Do you have any uh, hobbies or interests outside of music? Yes. I'm, I, I love doing sports a lot and um, I love uh, being in the nature. Uh, yeah. This is skiing, skiing and, and, um, and uh, sure enough, yeah. Doing all kinds of sports, uh, swimming and running. And this is, uh, this is something what I really like, I like traveling, even so I'm traveling business-wise a lot, but I, I enjoy also uh, traveling with my wife and with my kids to, you know, just see different different places. Yeah, this, this I would say basically are my, my two hobbies. 
What's your favorite place you've traveled? You've been all over the world. Uh, there's a couple of, and funny enough, we, I always love a lot. Go, and I'm not saying this because you're American. I, I love a lot always going to the U S yeah. we were here in Nashville and we were enjoying it so much. It's such, such, such a fun city, but, um, apart from the U S I really, I really love, uh, Thailand. Mm. And, uh, it's a wonderful country. Wonderful. Um, uh, people I have are just very nice these buddhist spirit there it's just wonderful that is great and, um also i have to say uh, uh all 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 asian countries i'm always amazed there's always so much to discover in china in in, uh, in taiwan all these countries have something very interesting it's interesting because you're in europe and when i go there i'm fascinated because it's so different you know like buildings are you know almost 2000 years old it just blows my mind and the arch you know of course architecture is like really different and it's so uh it seems like very majestic there for some reason you know yeah but perhaps we're too used to it you know we're i i i i agree with you but there is wonderful places in europe i'm mean, no question about it but for us, it's more more challenging to whatever to be in in San Francisco. And <laughs> yeah. Grass is always greener, right? The yeah. grass is always, yeah. <laughs> Nashville. I mean, what I really, or what we, I have to say, we, me, and and my wife and the team, we really enjoyed it so much. All these country and western bars and in the evening, and uh, all this music there. I mean, it was just great. You know, we were just having such a great time. Well, the people in Nashville are so nice, too. I mean, they're just really sweet and genuine people there, man. Very kind. That's right. Tell me about uh, a specific experience you had that changed your life or changed the way you think about things. I think, I think what changed my life, but I think this is uh, something what a lot of people say, is, is when, my, when, my, when my first child was born. And uh, this really made me aware of, of all the responsibility you have all of a sudden. And um, this changed my mindset, I have to say. Hmm. Children just bring this with it. But I think that's something most people would tell you. And uh, because other than that, like really big things would change my mind. I, I, I don't really have that. No, mm. no, no. Ch having children's huge, huge. Yeah, that really made, it made me change my habits and my way of thinking. Yeah. What's the most important lesson that running BAM cases has taught you? That the most difficult thing in running a company, especially a small company, what is, more or less worldwide active, you know, is to 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 keep up with your with with your people. Because talking of my my because we talked about all the the uh, companies throughout the world. And these are these are really partly very small companies, you know. In Moscow, there are two people. In Brazil, there's one person. We just started that business there. In in um, in China, it's it's two people, but to keep to keep a good good spirit and a good contact because a lot of time these people feel kind of lost because they're all alone in in this big Chinese market, for example. Mm. Well, for me, the, the 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 biggest challenge is to keep the spirit and to keep everybody connected. And what is easier today with with Skype and with uh, with with the possibilities we have communication wise. But we also do every year we do a, a meeting where we come all together and we usually we do it when we have a trade show somewhere in in the us in nam show or in 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 shanghai at the big music show and if not we do it just somewhere in one of our locations just so everybody gets together and everybody can exchange uh, uh, um, uh, information and you see people in real and not only on on a screen so this is this is one of the major major things i learned in bam to to keep you know to keep the team up and we have a wonderful team we have no fluctuation we have nobody 
uh, we have no, no, you know, we, we, we took over 10 years ago. The same people are here. Wow. We, and Carol's been with you for what, 20 years, I think she said, or something well, like that. Almost 20 years with them. Yeah. And, um, we, we rather got a lot of new good people in as well as we were growing the company and we're very happy with whom we got on, on board. That's great, man. That's really, uh, again, that's another, uh, I, I think that says a lot about the, about your, you, man, is that what's important to you, you know, that you, you didn't say anything about numbers and you're a numbers guy. You said it's about the people, man. Yeah. And last question, uh, what's been the biggest change in your personality over the last 10 years and how much of that change has been intentional and how much is just a natural part of aging? Well, through the process of aging is, I mean, you can't deny or nobody would deny that with getting older, you get smarter. I mean, that's a fact. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. We still, we still, we have long the, uh, the hope for that. But, uh, but nevertheless, no, I think, I think sure enough, you get, you, you get smarter and you get, um, you not really wiser. I mean, that's stupid, but as you have more experience you you just learn more and you every day every day brings you further uh, this is this is the part what comes what comes automatically um what i experienced is also that um with time and in, within the last 10 years i realized more and more that there is only there is only a certain time per day and there's only only one lunch you can eat, you know what I mean? So you don't always have to try to push everything just further, 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 because I mean, as I said, there's only one meal you can eat a day or two. Yeah. So the thing is, I think, I think it is very important to, to, to be down to the ground somehow and to know what is possible and what is, what is especially possible in our in our um, in our environment and in our way in our industry, and um, there is uh, uh, because some people they they get those crazy ideas and they think they have to grow their company and and get some some whatever some venture capital in and I, you know and I had these people trying to. Um, to 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 come in to to push the company uh telling me uh, the worst thing what can happen is that you there that, that you could do sales and you cannot do them because you don't have the production capacity so i'm happy i told them i no i don't I, i'm not going to do this good for you focus on our product and our customers and we know that we are in a in a niche market and that this we're we're old economy, you know. We we make cases for musical instruments. That's yeah, what, that's what we know how to do, and we rather grow slowly and healthy instead of getting some. Because in our days, and there there the financial guy guy comes back. There's so much money out there, and people don't know where to put it because they can't get any interest rates from the banks. Oh so, yeah, man, they're looking. They are looking, and they. Yeah. I had, I, had a, I had quite a lot banging on my door and asking, hey, we could accelerate your business. Yeah. Yeah. Do I want that? No. I'm happy. I have a good team. We're slowly growing. We have uh, fantastic musicians. Uh, we have fantastic customers and uh, also uh, our our customers in terms of, of shops and, 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 and people out there. So, no. And this... Before, when I told you I was a CFO of a big company, I was a lot more driven by pushing and going growth and, and, you know, more the the money kind of view. And this has changed. This has changed. For me, it is more important to be stable. You know, we invest, for example, in our own factories. We buy land. We build our own factories. I mean... That's that's completely against against the the science against economy. Yes, leverage. Leverage. This is yeah. you don't do that. I mean, right. you rent buildings because you rather sell the company in a couple of years and get a nice warm uh, leave out of that. And but this is not my intention at all. And so yeah, this is this has changed a little bit. 
I'm that's happy. great, man. That's I'm great. A small entrepreneur. And well, not, yeah. It, just being happy, man. That's a big accomplishment nowadays. Seriously, man. It really is. Yeah. Um, it's funny when you were talking about you can't get money. When I was a kid going to college, I worked in a bank as a teller. I was renewing five year CDs for 16%. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't understand at the time what it, this all meant. I, you yeah. know, I'm just a kid. But could you imagine 16 annual percent annually? Un unreal. Unreal. Crazy, you're crazy, right? It is, it is absolutely crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Hey, listen, first of all, I really appreciate your time. You're a lovely guy. You got a great business, a great product, and you're very kind to make a really good offer to my listeners. So um, let me tell everybody what it is. First of all, if you're looking for peace of mind with your instrument when you're traveling, if you're looking for protection to know that your instrument will be there in one piece and be playable with no problems and no surprises, you really should consider getting a BAM case for, your, for yourself. Uh, it's going to preserve your instrument. It's a great value for a case that's likely to last as long as you're alive. And in fact, Robert is guaranteeing the cases for life. If you have any problems, defects, repairs, they will repair them. That's unheard of in like any business. Uh, let me tell you what to do. Go to bamcases.com, B-A-M cases.com. Uh, if you need some help, first of all, choosing a case or you want information or you want to learn the differences between the case, they got great people there. I've met them both. It's Carol or Steven. Steven's actually a professional musician, and you can talk with either of them. Any questions at all for guidance, uh, let them know you heard about them here on Everyone Loves Guitar. Phone number is 201. It's on the website, bamcases.com, but it's 201-342-7700. If you order a case online or in talking with Carol or Steven, let them know you heard the show uh, or enter the code on the, on the shopping cart of ELG for Everyone Loves Guitar, and you will get a free BAM t-shirt, a free BAM real leather luggage tag, a mug, and a, a free BAM mug and a journal. Also, and this is really generous, if you buy a tracker with your case, and the tracker is the uh, device that not only tracks exact location of where your instrument is, but it's the way that you get validation and feedback on the temperature and the humidification of your instrument. So if it's in cartage or downstairs or you forget it and it becomes too warm or too dry, you'll get notified right away. Uh, Robert will pay for your first three years of internet access for free. So you have to buy the tracker, but you get the first three years of internet access for free. And after that, it's $60 for the th next three years. So it's a great deal. Um, and again, you get that by entering the code ELG or by telling Carol or Steven that you uh, heard about this on the guitar, on Everyone Loves Guitar. Also, as far as guarantees, uh, normally, there's a 30-day guarantee. If you're unhappy with the product, he's extending that to 60 days. So there's absolutely no risk. You buy it. If for whatever reason you're unhappy with it, just let them know and you ship it back. You'll get your money back. Um, uh, like I said, the first two years, any kind of repairs, they will pay to ship or defects. And they will pay to, for the shipping back to BAM, to the warehouse to repair it. And after that, Robert's guaranteeing it for life. Any kind of repairs, you know, you'll have to pay for shipping, which is pretty reasonable if you're 15 years down the road, uh, but they'll fix it. And also enter your email address there. If you're not ready to buy and go to bamcases.com and enter your email address. Okay. I'm going to just go through that one more time because it's a lot of stuff. Bamcases.com. If you have questions at all, or if you need help or any kind of service, call Carol or Steven. The phone number's on the website, 201-342-7700. Let them know you heard about the product here on Everyone Loves Guitar, or if you're just buying it direct off the website, enter ELG in the shopping cart. You'll get a free BAM t-shirt, free leather luggage tag, a free BAM mug, and a free journal. And if you buy a tracker, they will pay your first three years of internet access for free, which is really cool. And again, it comes with a 60-day satisfaction money back guarantee and lifetime guarantee for repairs and uh, that's about any did i leave anything out or did i forget anything is there anything else that you want to talk about 
No, it's fine. I mean, I was I was astonished about uh, your questions, and I hope, uh, <laughs> oh, you uh, great answers, man. It's good to get to know you. And uh, no, it was very good, and I was having a lot of fun. And it was absolutely right what you said about the offer, and uh, we we partly repair. I I sometimes see cases coming in here, they're like thirty years old cello cases where, me personally, I I would say. A luggage after 30 years of a musician, I mean, there is. Time for a new one. <laughs> they ask for reparation. We do it. We charge only the material we, we, we use, and we send it back. Okay, this is uh, the transport cost is on, on, on the customer. But uh, if they love their case so much, so why not? And, um, but I have to say, musicians sometimes... Um, forget that we're making making the luggage and not the instrument and the luggage will never last eternally you know it's not it's not it's not made to last 50 years because you the musician opens and closes it every day and uh, just imagine you do this with your samsonite he's he, it's toast after one year so yeah. Our cases, they last very long, and we have the proof every day, and we're very proud of that, but um, our our hinges as well. At some point, they're done. I mean, there's no way around it after yeah. 15 years, you know. But, but you'll repair it if you want. <laughs> Thanks very much, Robert. Hang on one second. I'm going to wrap up. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please share it on your social media channels with your friends. Check out BAM Cases. Thanks to Robert Getz for spending time with us and his wife, Katja, is right around the corner there. Um, check out BAM Cases and don't forget to uh, you know call them up if you have any questions. It's a great product. Like I said, I saw these guys at NAMM. I was immediately impressed. It's really light. It's like an armored car almost and as far as the quality of the protection man i couldn't believe how how well it was and just it's a really cool looking case too so that's it don't forget happiness is a choice so choose wisely be nice go play your guitar and have fun till next time peace and love everybody i'm out robert thanks for everything thank you <laughs>